Other news tonight. Nearly 10 years ago, the Sheriff's Department submitted a cold case to the Kern County Crime Lab, and it was a success. DNA recovered from the murder victim's body matched a convicted serial rapist. But what seemed a slam dunk was turned away by the district attorney's office because the victim had been a Jane Doe for decades. It wasn't until a few years ago when another DNA match was made on a cold case in Ventura County that investigators there realized their victim, murdered in July of 1980, was killed just days apart from the Kern County Jane Doe's murder. Ventura County decided to prosecute both cases, doubling their workload, but giving both victims a shot at justice. Nearly 40 years after the murders, the victims got just that. 17's Olivia LaVoice has more. Typically at a sentencing hearing, we hear from the victim's loved ones about the impact their loss has had on them. It's a reminder of why a sense of closure and justice is so important. But today, we didn't have that. Both murder victims are still unidentified, their family unable to mourn their loss. Yet it still was very emotional in the courtroom, as almost everyone there made it clear they're here for the victims and they've become their family. At 66 years old, it was unlikely Wilson Schuest would ever get paroled from prison following his two murder convictions. But his public defender tried nonetheless to ask the judge for mercy. When Judge Ryan Wright had his chance to speak, he first and foremost commended the investigators involved in this case. Detective Rhodes, Detective Evans, and the other officers who won the rest of the community seem to have forgotten about these victims they did. It was a tremendous effort uh, to bring this case some sort of closure, which their community uh, deserved, even if they didn't realize that they needed it. And to Shuest. And while I take no personal pleasure ever in sentencing a criminal defendant, I will tell you I'm taking a tremendous amount of professional satisfaction in telling you there will never be a parole board. Your last breath is going to be taken in state prison, right where you deserve to be, and it's going to be on my order. And with that, Wilson Schuest was escorted off, sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. It took me a long time to process that and to realize they had no one. It was very heartbreaking, and you felt like, you know, does anybody, is there anybody here in the world who, who cares or knows they should care? But the jurors soon realized that Jane Doe's, one of whom was four months pregnant, weren't without people who care. It kept sinking in deeper and deeper to me that uh, I have to be their family. We have to be their family. We have to be their voice and see this to the end. And that little baby would have been 38 years old this year. Doing this trial was probably one of the most important things I've done in my life. For prosecutor John Barrick, this outcome is satisfying. But he's still left with the frustration of Shuest refusing to help investigators finally identify the Jane Doe's. I think this is the highlight of his life, and I think he gets some sort of sick pleasure out of knowing that we'll never be able to identify these women. And I think he wants to hold on to that. A thought that also torments investigator Steve Rhodes, yet doesn't deter him. When we first met Rhodes several months ago, he talked of retiring. Since then, an arrest has been made in the notorious Golden State Killer case. Rhodes played a key role in that investigation. And now Shuest is convicted and sentenced. While many others may feel their job would be done at this point, Rhodes is different. And the job for this particular case involving Chu West is identifying these two young women. I really and truly feel that I, we need to send them home to their families. It's not over until I, I can find out who they are and send them home. As investigator Steve Rhodes said, this case isn't over until these women are reunited with their families. It's the goal here at Channel 17 to help make that happen, but we need your help. If you have any information whatsoever that could help identify these women, call the number you're seeing on your screen. This is the 24-hour Jane Doe hotline set up by the Kern County Coroner's Office. Again, any and all information is appreciated. Reporting from Ventura County Superior Court, I'm Olivia LaVoice, 17 News. And a footnote here, we have created a website with all of our information on this case. None of the content is copyrighted. It is free for anyone to use, so we hopefully can help identify these two women. To find the content, visit our website at kget.com and click Murdered 
and forgotten.